I have now the great pleasure to introduce our next guest, Falke Pisano, and her manifesto called Manifesto Machine. The body of work of Falke Pisano, text-based performances, videos, objects, but also photocopied publications, so here we are back to this idea of dissemination, has stemmed from a practice of writing. Her recent exhibitions, uh, there are many, include the Stedelijk Museum Bureau, the Kunsthalle Basel, the Berlin Biennial Manifesto in Trentino, but also, most recently, the Yokohama Triennale in Japan. Falke is working at the moment on a publication of her work together with Will Holder. Please join me in welcoming Falke Pisano. Uh, <clears throat> hello. So the title is Manifesto Machine. Manifesto Machine exists of two parts. This division is the only real formal decision taken. Part one consists of different kinds of doublings, things that are divided into parts, things that have a double existence, things that exist in two types, things that exist as polarities, things that double. These doublings are both formal and conceptual. In this way, part one doubles the following the manifesto itself, time, space, form, individuation, the body, articulations, statements, and performativity. The structure or non-structure of part two, however, relies on a distinction between multiplicity and singularity. The only doubling in part two is the singular doubling that takes place in a mirror the doubling of the reflection. Part two is something of a subjective navigation of part one. Part one, <clears throat> manifesto. The manifesto exists of two parts. Part one is before, part two is after. Part two is based on the space that part one occupies. Although part one is after the other, the linearity that this implies does not rely on a sense of consistency of time. Time. There are two modes of temporality. There is the floating time of event and the time of measure of situations, things, and persons. The connection between both is made by language and space. Space. Space is divided horizontally and vertically. Horizontally, space is divided in two parts, a here and a not here. Vertically, space exists as a double of itself. Form. Everything that has a form has two forms, a form of content and a form of expression. Because expression is independent, it reacts on content. By the reaction of the expression on content, a singularity is created. Individuation. There are two ways of individuation, namely the individuation of a subject, a person, a thing, or a substance, and individuation that consists entirely of relations, of movement and rest between molecules or particles capacities to affect or be affected. The body. A body is defined twice by all that belongs to it materially, materially under given conditions of movement and rest, speed and slowness, and by that what it is able to establish as effects at a given power or degree of potential. Articulations. There are two articulations. The first chooses or deducts. The second establishes forms and substances. Statements. There are two types of statements. The first type is always the result of collective agents of enunciation. The second type is the individual statement generated by conscious thought and intentions. Performativity. A performative statement doubles and transforms the very state of things that it generates it, that generate it. 
The performative is the most manifest instance of a transformational dimension within any statement. The transformation applies to bodies, but it's in itself incorporeal. A performative statement is nothing outside of the circumstances that make it performative. Part two, I here now. The I has multiple existences. To start with, there is an I in the form of a person, a living and lived person, speaking and spoken to, I, you, an individual me. As well, there is a universal I with the possibility to speak beyond the given, an I that speaks in the field of belief instead of knowledge. Finally, both the grammar and the discourse is given that construct a specific concept I and the I as I machine. Because here, the specific singular notion of the I as concept is an abstract machine. A concept fulfills functions in a field that is made up out of variables. A concept is not created or does not disappear at whim. New functions can be constructed and new fields discovered. This concept I will, in time, be assigned new functions and variables capable of bringing change. I-machine is a singularity, an abstract machine with the proper name I-machine. The proper name here does not designate an individual. The proper name I-machine is given when an individual opens up to the multiplicity passing through him or her. I machine does not function to represent even something real, but rather constructs a real that is yet to come, a new type of reality. Thus, when, when it constitutes points of creation or potenti potentiality, it does not stand outside of history, but it is always prior to history. The speaking form of I machine is the agency that selects which words are generated and coupled with, the, with which state of things. This agency constitutes what can be seen as the power to speak. Not I, not here, not now. A speaking figure becomes a subject when it acquires the power to move. In this case, what is moved is the power of speech itself. The power of speech is transferred by the formal construction of another figure that can speak. The I, the subject, constructs a position. A position here is a physical point at which speech, speech is possible. In other words, the position is created in such a way that it possesses the qualities that enable it to generate as a part of itself a figure that can speak. The speaking, spe speaking figure will exist on and as the position that, create, that has been created for it. The position, and so the speaking figure, is not fixed, but always altered by the speech it facilitates. From and as this constructed position, the sp figure speaks about something other, elsewhere, or of another time, creating a landscape of not I, not here, not now. When speech develops in this way, as if a landscape is created, of exactly that what one can testify of, the landscape will be made of private effect. It will include what is not known and not understood in that what is presumably understood because it is effectively perceived. This inclusion of non-understanding in a landscape or in speech prevents it from obtaining a fixed meaning. Not being able to speak, I think. The idea of speech gives as a reflection the possibility of not being able to speak in the form of a figure that doesn't speak but thinks. I think means 
There is a certain locus called I, where action and awareness of action are not different, where being defeats itself with its own awareness of itself, and thus where no intrusion from outside is even conceivable. Such an I cannot speak. She who speaks enters into a system of relations which presuppose her presence as well as the presence of others. The relation between speech and the potential to act must be sought, must be sought in the opening of the locus I which thinks. Thank you.